In May 1964, First Republican President Kenneth Kaunda and other nationalists participated at the London Constitution Conference. This changed the name of the country from Northern Rhodesia to the Republic of Zambia. At independence, the new republic immediately put in place a new constitution which was scheduled to a British Government Act of Parliament known as Zambia Independence Order 1964. This constitution that ushered Zambia into independence was flawed, as it had many weaknesses. The constitution that uh, ushered uh, the independence of Zambia was negotiated by politicians and the colonialists at Lancaster House in London. And it was a, a closed shop kind of uh, debate, you, you see. And the people, we entrusted our politicians to speak on our, on our behalf. So that was 1964. The lack of separation of powers between the executive, the uh, judiciary, and the legislature. There's no separation. There's no division. It's all in one. Why? Because this same powerful president is the one that controls who heads these institutions. And because he appoints everyone, so everyone, as you know, will dance to his tune. And that's a problem. The Bill of Rights contains fundamental human rights and freedoms. So our current Bill of Rights is not adequate to take care of all our human rights questions. In an attempt to address these weaknesses, the Constitution had previously been amended three times. The 1973 amendment ushered the one-party state. That was to bring the, the country to where the president wanted it to be, the one-party state. The 1991 amendment facilitated the return of Zambia to a multi-party state. The 1996 amendment eliminated Kaunda and other prominent opposition leaders from running for president and also declared Zambia a Christian nation. I further declare that Zambia is a Christian nation. We have that clause in the constitution on um, eligibility to be a president of the Republic of Zambia. There's that parental clause which has caused all sorts of problems because that was agenda driven to fix a particular person. Several attempts were made to come up with a new constitution that would meet the aspirations of the people. Everybody, when they go, when they're out of power, when they're in opposition, they believe and trust that the constitution is flawed. But once they get into power, then it becomes a very powerful tool of entrenching their power. All along, it has been piecemeal. They go and change what they want. And that's why these processes have been failing. Politicians, often hijack the process uh, towards the very end. Um, they often, um, you know, pick and choose. The fact that the fundamental flaws with the Constitution would not be addressed through amendments was widely known and accepted. And therefore, efforts were made to come up with a new Constitution that would meet the aspirations of the people. I believe that a Constitution is made by people for the people. Therefore, if we're going to have rules and laws and regulations and systems to govern ourselves, we ourselves should participate as much as possible in putting together those rules. For me, the attributes of a good constitution is one that respects the aspirations of the people. And it's one that is adopted by the people themselves without any intermediaries. A constitution that gives people power to decide what they want. The need for a new people-driven constitution became a political agenda. All politicians aspiring for presidential office would promise a new constitution. Among those who promised a new constitution when elected into office was Michael Sata. Upon assuming office, Michael Sata appointed the Technical Committee on Drafting the Zambian Constitution in November 2011. We all were very confident that this time, this government means what it's going to do. And who could doubt that? 
it was in their own manifesto. When they, were, they didn't have the power, it was in their own manifesto. It was a mixture of excitement and anxiety. Uh, excitement because we had read the manifesto for the Patriotic Front. That is a campaign document that used. And that promised the Zambian people they were going to enact a constitution. In fact, they used a phrase themselves that they were going to enact two things. First, a people-driven constitution. And secondly, they are going to ensure that is done in, in, within 90 days. Civil society movement in Zambia has always been part of the constitution reform processes that have taken place since as far back as 1972. They've always participated. They've always campaigned for accountability. They've always provided... Um, you oversight over the process to ensure that their interests are taken into account and that the process is participatory and people driven. So likewise when the technical committee drafting the new constitution was commissioned in 2011 by the PF government, civil society movement was part of the process and they were mobilized into various coalitions following and fostering different interests and each of the coalitions that was formed would have a particular interest and they would be pushing to ensure that their interests are taken into the content of the draft constitution. After the consultations people were now anxiously waiting to see the first draft that would reflect their submissions. Then the delays began. Very quickly we also realized that um, once the 90 days had elapsed the PF began dragging their feet and very quickly we noticed the rhetoric had changed and uh, some actions also on the part of government I think lent credence to the fact that uh, they were no longer committed to uh, delivering a people-driven constitution within a reasonable uh, time period. After the release, the first draft was subjected to validation. After the validation, it was noted that the first draft, by and large, reflected the aspirations of the people. Representatives of the communities in the districts met for three to five days, went through the first draft, made their own comments, and made resolutions. And then this was passed on to the provinces. Selected members of the communities met at the province level, looked at the first draft, looked at comments from the districts, you know, voted on the contents. Then this went to what they called the sector groups, you know, like uh, professional bodies, etc. They did the same thing. Then it came to the National Convention, which also did the same thing. The National Convention agreed and gave Zambians a constitution, which the, the technical committee just went to polish up. Then began the long wait for the second draft. There were stories. The technical committee said no, they were not ready, they need enough time. Just at releasing the second and final draft, it became an issue. The late president, uh, may he so rest in peace, Comrade Michael Chirufiasata, you know, he began to talk about things that you would not understand. Because everybody is talking about people driven constitution. So once you produce the animal driven constitution, we compare the two constitutions and one we have and the other one. Then we shall, we shall look at that. After much pressure, it was said the constitution was lost. Who had it? So now the fight took a turn. The situation required a more coordinated civil society approach to exert a strong push on the PF to release the second draft constitution. Civil society realized at this point that running in different directions in a fragmented way was not achieving a, 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 a stronger push on the government which was resistant to at delivering on the constitution. So it is at this point that various coalitions saw the need to come together and form one big coalition called the Grand Coalition so that this would exert a stronger and a powerful force to push the government to deliver on their promise to the people. At a prayer meeting we had, which we dubbed Rescue Our Constitution, other politicians came on board and they said, we are also a party to the Constitution. And it was from that the politicians saying they want to work with us to, get our, to rescue our Constitution, that we became the Grand Coalition. Early in 2014 then, it was felt to rename the wider coalition into a grand coalition because then it included political players, it included the labor, labor movement. The grand coalition became a force to reckon with as the stakeholders began to speak with one voice as a well-led, 
well-coordinated and structured group of advocates pushing for the release of the final draft constitution. Bringing everyone together and ensuring that we have unity of purpose and we are all interested in the, in the same structure, we are all following the same structure and interested in the, in the same outcome was not easy. There were like frictions and conflicts and, and things like that. But what the campaign did was to bring out all the various interests from different interest groups and form one document that we called the 10 basic minimum principles that applied to all the various coalitions. It is these 10 basic minimum principles that were a rallying point for everyone. The campaign for the release of the final people-driven draft constitution had started. We believe that um, the church has worked with uh, the country uh, from its uh, birth in 1964 because we believe that um, um, God wants uh, uh, his people to be ruled with justice, with fairness, and uh, in a harmonious and uh, peaceful manner. And what can guarantee that more than a good uh, people-driven constitution? Our main motivation or driving um, aspect to this is really to be able to ensure that the rights of women do get recognized, and protected within our constitution. In particular, it is the issue of um, the Bill of Rights, because the Bill of Rights is a fundamental uh, provision that defines the roles and responsibilities, but also, most importantly, the rights of every citizen. We as LAS had an annual general meeting at which the membership resolved that we will participate in the constitutional making process. First, we wanted to ensure that uh, in uh, providing input to the process, we wanted to make sure the, gov the country protected the process itself of enacting the constitution, as well as protected the content of the constitution documentation that we are going to result. For Zambia Civic Education Association, we are in this campaign primarily to see that children's rights are comprehensively enshrined in our constitution. We know that the foundation of any democracy, the foundation of any development is anchored on the good laws. So as Zambia Council for so Social Development, this has been our inspiration. However, this whole work had some challenges. There has been a great misunderstanding on the part of the politicians where they think that constitution making is a political process and not a people process. The power of the Grand Coalition's united and coordinated approach began to bear fruit. The fact that we all accepted to work together under one voice strengthened the, the voice and it strengthened the push. At this point, you could see the force, the, how forceful the voice of the Grand Coalition became. The Grand Coalition's campaign created a loud noise that irked the powers that be and stimulated reactions. We are stopped from having public meetings, assemblies. Um, we are accused that we are being funded by foreign uh, individuals. Some of us were accused, no, we are conduits. Um, of um, political parties that are receiving money from political parties, uh, then give it to the Grand Coalition. Uh, uh, political parties themselves, others jumped out. So we had all these issues both outside the Grand Coalition and within the Grand Coalition. I experienced uh, some um, intimidations. Uh, I received a number of um, intimidating you know, phone calls. Uh, including from uh, the highest offices in the land. Uh, it was terrifying, but at the same time, uh, I, I believed that, um, uh, first of all, uh, one needs to be courageous, one needs to be um, uh, resilient, one needs to persevere uh, in the cause of fighting for what is uh, right and what is uh, just. These negative reactions were meant to silence the Grand Coalition. But this made the campaign to grow stronger. They sent cadres uh, to, to beat us from, from within the church, okay, at Bigoka in Matero, okay? They came with pangas, whips, and everything. And, and this, this is well documented. But for me, that 
intimidation actually made me uh, stronger to even uh, 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 do better. We were focused and uh, we were resolute, uh, we were committed and we just kept going. This push of the Grand Coalition led to the release of the final draft on the 23rd of October 2014. We only saw the final draft in October towards the independence celebration last year. And that was also after pressure. The Grand Coalition validated the document against the 10 basic minimums, and the Coalition was happy with it as it met more than 80% of the basic minimums. A few days after the release of the draft, then-President Michael Sata died on the 28th of October 2014. This meant that the country would go into a presidential by-elections within three months. Sometimes nature has a way of coming in to disrupt everything. The president died in October, and then that time was taken up with succession battles, elections, and then the man who had become new minister of justice, who promised so much, became president. The concern of the Grand Coalition at this point was that once the country went into election mode, the constitution would be forgotten. The Grand Coalition undertook to put the constitution on the presidential by-election agenda. The Grand Coalition introduced social contracts which aspiring presidential election candidates were made to sign, committing to make the adoption and enactment of the constitution first priority if voted into office. We had several uh, presidents of different political parties signing up, pledging that should they get elected uh, into government, that they would um, enact a people-driven constitution. And ultimately, the ruling party did not sign the social contract. The Grand Coalition implemented the No Constitution, No Vote, where they demanded a roadmap from all the presidential candidates. The two leading contenders released the roadmaps. Feeling the heat from the Grand Coalition's push, President Edgar Lungu, at his inauguration, promised to speedily facilitate adoption and enactment of the Constitution. I want to hand you a new constitution. We will definitely deliver a people-driven constitution as the roadmap recently released. After all this, the Patriotic Front started changing their rhetoric. They started identifying some clauses that they were not comfortable with. Out of the blues, government somehow discovered that there were contentious issues in the, in the draft. People had already resolved there was no contentious issue. So the question we asked is, what are those? Number two, who actually determined what these were? The National Convention, to which I was part, the resolution was that eh, there were only two contentious issues. The death penalty became a contentious issue. Uh, some religious groups said we should not have a death penalty, but others said we should. The other one was the, the Barotse land agreement. And it was resolved that the leadership, the national leadership, and the people of the Barotse land must sit together and resolve this administratively. The Patriotic Front changed to talking about adoption of the Constitution through the Parliamentary Amendment. We began seeing um, you know, new developments and this is where the whole business of now going to Parliament emerged. The Grand Coalition conducted a campaign for the national referendum as the only credible way for adopting the final draft Constitution. Our joint advocacy was to do with the process of adopting the new constitution and our call under the grand coalition was a process that would put people at the center of adopting a new constitution we went to the provinces we met chiefs um, we went on the radio we went on tv i think the message was out there and there was so much passion behind it because ultimately i think the people who were behind the grand coalition are patriots 
you know, we care about our country, we want to see the best for our country. The majority of the people on the Grand Coalition really wanted the best for Zambia. Now again, because of the resistance from the GC, eventually we heard, no, what we'll do is we'll just pull out the Bill of Rights and take the rest to Parliament, because the Bill of Rights by law requires a referendum. Perfectly understandable, we don't disagree with that. Even though our contention was that everything should be subjected to a referendum. The coalition used social media, radio and TV jingles, newspaper adverts, press statements and press briefings to raise awareness and galvanize citizens' reactions. The government ignored the people and intensified their plans to take the constitution to parliament for amendment. Even then, the Grand Coalition maintained its position that the parliamentary route was treacherous and not the right way to go. They want the 159 members of parliament to sit on their own and begin to dissect the constitution left, right and center and cherry pick those uh, clauses that they feel resonate with them. But we are saying no as a grand coalition and as a people. The grand coalition petitioned the Minister of Justice in an attempt to stop him from tabling the amendments. Citizens drawn from students and youth movement, women's movement and the labor movement signed a petition demanding that the minister should not take the constitution to parliament but send it back to the people for adoption through a referendum. Unfortunately, the final draft constitution was taken to parliament. The Grand Coalition did not give up. Currently, the government, the Patriotic Front government, has taken the route where they actually took the parliamentary amendment route. So under the Grand Coalition, we are saying, Aluta continue. The Grand Coalition continued its campaign, targeting members of parliament to appeal to their conscience to not butcher the interests of the people. We are appealing, first of all, to our members of parliament to refuse to being used by these uh, people in, in the executive. Because, I mean, they have, they have an agenda. For them, it is to remain uh, in power for long. It went to parliament, most of us protested, we said we want, don't want this, we want a wholesome adoption, so that we give unto ourselves, once and for all, a new people-driven constitution. Parliament debated, we didn't want them to debate and throw out what the people have said. The constitution amendments that were tabled in parliament addressed some of the Grand Coalition's demands. 50 plus 1, the running mate, the date of the um, elections, and uh, dual citizenship. We are happy, 50 plus has gone through. We are happy, we are, we are running a mate, even though we have question mates on that. But some progressive clauses had been shot down. The mixed member representation, they threw it out. For us, that's a big setback. Because with that mixed member, we would have seen people who would normally not have the leverage to get into those positions in parliament, would have, women would have had that chance. Youth would have had that chance. People with disabilities would have had that chance. It was thrown out. Devolution of power, the provincial assemblies would have ensured that the different regions have power to make decisions for their own. That was thrown out. Zambians have not only been crying for the 50% plus one, they have been crying for a better constitution which includes 50% plus one and these others that you have left out. It's a peace we have been given. It's a total package. That's what we are asking for. Package. The content of the constitution has come this far. The Grand Coalition will push for the Bill of Rights as drafted by the people to be adopted and enacted. The quest for a new people-driven constitution is far from over. We are resolved either at a personal level, at an institutional level, at a community level to carry on this campaign, to carry on this crusade. For me, uh, 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 speaking for others also, I am prepared for my life to be taken. I, 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 I'll be happy. The Grand Coalition's journey is one of bravery and passion. A desire to see the people of Zambia's aspiration in a representative democracy fulfilled. It is a tale of men and women who have decided to put their differences aside and work together for a common goal and outcome. 
Against all odds, they continue to fight for a cause they believe in. The Grand Coalition remains alive.